Charles Spurgeon said discernment is not simply a matter of telling the difference between what is right and wrong. Rather, it is the difference between right and almost right. Did you know, let me start off by grossing you out here, the FDA requires that meat of all sorts, ground beef, chicken nuggets, taco filling, all meat must be at least 35% actual meat. The other 65% doesn't even have to be meat. It can be made up of <clears throat> any mixture of edible fillers and chemicals, things like maltodextrin, silicon dioxide, food colors, and artificial flavoring. We cannot tell the difference by looking between what is 100% food versus 35% food and 65% chemical filler. What if I told you that's just what the kingdom of God is like? So let's take another look at a familiar parable, but from a different perspective. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 24, the parable of the weeds. Here Yeshua describes a field that has wheat and weeds in it. The servants offer to go in and pull the weeds up, but the master forbids them, and he says, No, let them both grow together until the harvest, and then at harvest time, I'll tell the reapers to go gather the weeds first, and then the wheat may be gathered. Now, I've read this parable many times, and not being a farmer, I picture wheat and weeds as being very different things, and part of the meaning in this parable has been lost on me. So, you know, when I think of weeds, I think of what grows in my yard that looks completely different from the grass that I want to keep. Well, that's not the tares that are being described in this parable. Take a look at this picture. If we use our concordance and we look at the word weeds, we see that Yeshua is talking about, and if I'm saying this right, zazanion. Now, there's debate over what plant this actually refers to. Let's take a look at zazanion. Where's our weeds here? You can see that it is something that resembles wheat, except the grains are black. Now, like I said, there's some debate over what, what this plant exactly is, but here's what we do know. Before the harvest, the two are virtually indistinguishable from one another. Strong says it looks just like the wheat. There's very minor differences. So minor that the master knew that if his servants went to pull up the weeds, then they wouldn't be able to tell the difference, and they would wind up removing some of the wheat as well. Okay, so twist on the parable. They look just alike. How does that change the parable at all? Well, if we go down to the explanation of this parable, let's take a look at verse 41 here. It says, The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. Let me read that again. It says, The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather where? Out of his kingdom. We're not talking about a separation between sinners and saints. We're talking about a separation between the wheat and the almost. The right and the almost right or the mostly right. We're talking about what looks like truth, what looks like legit, from what actually is. And now the parable should bring a sense of urgency. You should be asking yourself, what am I? Of course, you're not an almost. That's everybody else out there, right? That's not my church, and that's not my family, and it's definitely not me. Well, there's a problem with that line of thinking. If we go to Proverbs 21, verse 2, we'll see that every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the heart. How would you know if someone was an almost? Remember, you can't tell by looking. They look just like everybody else. But Yeshua does give us some clues. Let's go back to the scripture. In verse 41, he says that his angels will gather out of his kingdom all the lawbreakers. 
Now, most churches teach that Jesus did away with the law on the cross. Isn't that interesting? Because Yeshua says that a weed is a lawbreaker, and you cannot break a law that doesn't exist. I want to stress the point that the tares are in the kingdom. Remember what Yeshua said in John 3, 5. In John 3, 5, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That means we're talking about people who really, truly have been born again. If they weren't really born again, they wouldn't be in the kingdom. Maybe now you can see why it's hard to distinguish the wheat from the weeds. Anyone can separate the saints from the ain'ts, but what about the wheat from the weeds? We know from verse 41 that the weeds are lawbreakers. Well, let's jump back to another passage in Matthew and go to 721 right here. Here we see that on the day when the weeds stand before Yeshua, they're going to say, Did we prophesy in your name? Did we cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works? Uh, didn't you see the miracles that happened in our church? Well, I have a question. Can you prophesy without the Holy Spirit? Can you perform a miracle in His name if you don't have a relationship with Him? Do signs and wonders in the church prove right doctrine? No, they don't. Yeshua will respond, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. The same Greek word for lawless, uh, lawlessness here is lawbreaker in Matthew 13, 41. Notice the specific reason he gives. Uh, you're not going to make it because you broke the law. He didn't say, depart from me, you who weren't baptized in a river instead of a tank. He didn't say, depart from me, you who didn't pay your tithes to the church. He said, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. Have you been told that God's law has been abolished? That we don't need to keep all ten of the Ten Commandments? Have you been told it's okay to eat meat that God's Word tells us is unclean? Have you been taught that Christians do Easter and Christmas, and then the Jews do Passover and Pentecost? These things are simply not true. If we go to Matthew 5.17, you will see that Yeshua says, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not so much as a dot will pass from the law until all has been accomplished. All is accomplished. Simple question. Have heaven and earth passed away yet? Maybe you have heard that uh, all is accomplished refers to Yeshua's death on the cross when he said it is finished. Well, let's compare what we read here against a passage in Revelation 21. Notice he says, until heaven and earth pass away. There's a specific point in time uh, after which everything is accomplished. So let's jump forward in time to Revelation chapter 21. Let's look at verse 1 and then 5 and 6. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Exactly the same verbiage that we just read in the previous verse. And the sea was no more. So if we skip down to 5 and 6, we see, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then in verse 6, he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It is done. Uh, Remember when Yeshua said he came to fulfill the law? He didn't just say, I came to fulfill the law. He said the law and the prophets, not just the law. There's so much that hasn't happened yet that's still in the prophets. All has not been accomplished. But here in verse 6 of the next to the last chapter in the last book of the Bible, we see that at this point, everything will be made new and everything that has happened, everything has happened that must happen and then we can say, it is done. All of it. And that makes sense 
because if we jump down to verse 22, we see, I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. Many of God's appointed times are calculated around the full moon, and they involve the temple. In the new heaven and the new earth, there won't be a need for either. There won't be any more sin. So if you don't want to be caught by surprise when you stand before Yeshua and found out to be a tear, then ask yourself, am I a lawbreaker? Am I keeping the Sabbath day holy by not working on it, by not spending any money or, and not having someone else work for me on the Sabbath day? Am I following the dietary commandments laid out in Leviticus 11, or do I love my bacon? Am I keeping God's holy days as laid out in Leviticus 23, or have I embraced days rooted in paganism like Christmas and Easter? Some people have said, these commandments, these things, they're not for today. But God's word says in Psalms 119, 160, the sum of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Think about that. It endures forever. And if we look to our Messiah himself, we see in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, you may hear some say, that's right. We need to keep the commandments that Jesus taught. Jesus never said eating pork is a sin. He had a different teaching than what we find in the Old Testament. Well, let's back up just a little bit in John and go to chapter 7, verse 16, where he says, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. The Greek word here for teaching is a word that means doctrine and instruction. Instruction is a better definition of Torah than law is. What Yeshua is really saying here is that the doctrine, the teaching, and the instruction that I am giving you it's not mine. It's the same thing that the Father taught. Now let's jump to Proverbs 4 and 2. It says, I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. Now let's look at the, since this is the ESV, let's look at the concordance to really get what is being said here. So we look at the word precepts. We see it's really doctrine. What he's basically saying is, I'm going to give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my teaching. What is teaching? Teaching is Torah. It's the word that is usually translated as law. Teaching or instruction is a better translation. So Proverbs says, here's some good doctrine for you. Don't break the Torah. Later, Yeshua says, my doctrine, my teaching, my Torah is not mine. It's the Father's. And honestly, the majority of Christianity believes that when you really push them on it. I mean, did Jesus ever say homosexuality was wrong? Well, Yahweh does in Leviticus. Did Jesus ever say it's wrong to marry your sister? Is it wrong to have sex with an animal? These things are not repeated in the New Testament. Uh, does that mean if Jesus didn't repeat it, it's okay? Do you honestly believe that? Of course not. Don't be a weed. Don't be a lawbreaker. Remember, our Savior said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's something to think about. Thanks for watching.